The world is changing. Thanks to advanced technologies, new innovations are being delivered faster than ever before. From gene editing to self-driving cars, to flying robots and even reusable rockets. But there's one technology that's not just bigger than the rest, but it's what powers them. I'm talking about artificial intelligence, which is already changing our lives in a fundamental way. Just like the smartphone did, and the internet before that, and computers before that. And not only can we invest in the best AI companies on the planet, but many of their stocks are down by 25% or more over the last year, making now a great time to do so. So in this episode, I'll highlight some of the latest investing research on AI, and show you some of the companies that are dominating this multi-trillion dollar market right now. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I think it's important to understand the science behind the stocks. Telling the difference between disruptors and the companies being disrupted can give you a big advantage as an investor. And in my opinion, nobody does a better job covering big technology breakthroughs and the big investing opportunities that come with them than ARK Invest. Well, a couple of days ago, ARK Invest released their big ideas report for 2023. And as always, AI sits at the center of everything they cover. So let's quickly go over the massive market opportunities that are being unlocked by AI. And then I'll dive into some of the companies that are in the best position to capture it. The reason that AI is always at the center of ARK Invest research is because of something called the convergence. The convergence is this idea that advanced technologies are overlapping more and more. Artificial intelligence is the most important catalyst and its velocity cascades through all other technologies. Think about it this way. As artificial intelligence gets faster and cheaper, it becomes faster and cheaper to program robots and sequence the human genome and optimize battery designs and teach a car to drive itself. But there are also feedback loops here. Self-driving AI improves as cars gather more data, and breakthroughs in these systems can make their way into other fields, like training robots to plan their routes and do their jobs more effectively. Now think about this. Banks are using AI to price risks and set interest rates for loans. Pharmaceutical companies are using AI to discover drugs, and robotics companies are using AI to go back in time and trigger a robot apocalypse. What's that? Our robot overlords want me to cut that last part? Robotics companies are using AI to optimize production lines and be more friendly to humans, while media companies are using it to recommend music and movies and so on. But because these are all applications of AI, a breakthrough in any one of these areas can have a big ripple effect on them all. And the latest breakthrough in AI is the widespread adoption of generative AI. Prompted by a short text, generative AI models can produce images, code, text, audio, and video. In less than one year, dozens of generative AI projects have created models that progress from grainy images to high-quality 3D models and videos. This is going to disrupt the exact fields that we thought AI would never disrupt, the creative arts. Something that would take five hours for a human to do can now be done in under a minute for almost 2,000 times cheaper. Think about how that's going to disrupt nearly every industry, from advertising to product design. But this isn't just about generating art. For example, what if you could automatically redo the dialogue and mouth movements of any video clip to make it available in multiple languages at multiple maturity ratings? Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. And I don't blame you, and now we're stuck on this stupid... Stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. And it's all my fault. All of a sudden, the TV and movie industries can make more than just sequels and spin-offs. They'll be able to take real creative risks, because AI will be able to help every project generate bigger returns from bigger audiences. Or what about a dedicated coding assistant? There's a lot more to writing code than just writing code. Coding assistants like Copilot can set up directories, repositories and environments, write documentation, define functions and interfaces, and translate between coding languages and a lot more. AI coding assistants are already cutting programming time in half for software engineers, not in the future, but today. By 2030, they could increase the output of software engineers by tenfold. So AI might not take your job in the future, but some Somebody who knows how to use AI definitely will. Speaking of which, let's talk about ChatGPT, because that's something everybody can be using right now. Just a few weeks ago, OpenAI unveiled ChatGPT to the public. ChatGPT uses natural language processing to analyze a user's query and generate a highly relevant response in just a few seconds. No pages and pages of search results, and of course, no ads. 
Today, it costs around one cent per query to run ChatGPT, which means it can't really compete with Google Search in terms of scale. But by 2030, the costs should be low enough that ChatGPT-style applications can be deployed at the same scale as things like Google and Wikipedia. Forget writing essays or passing the SATs, let's talk about the kinds of things that ChatGPT can do for investors and entrepreneurs that a Google search simply can't. Here's what happens when you ask ChatGPT for business ideas. Create a list of three startup ideas for enterprise B2B SaaS companies that have a compelling mission and use AI in some way. Let's avoid cryptocurrencies or the blockchain. Come up with cool and interesting names and ideas that are compelling enough that investors would be excited to invest millions of dollars. What you get from that is a list of three interesting business concepts that you can keep fleshing out with ChatGPT but you don't need to flush them out alone. You can ask ChatGPT to mimic famous entrepreneurs and answer your questions as if it was Elon Musk, Einstein, or Tesla, or all three of them put together. Then ask it how to grow the business that it just generated for you. And that's just ChatGPT. What about combining it with OpenAI's other tools, like creating a business's website or email campaign, or a set of advertisements where ChatGPT generates the text and Dolly 2 generates the imagery. In just a few hours, OpenAI's tools took us from a blank page to a business concept that's good enough to actually make decisions with. With tools like these, it's no wonder that Microsoft invested over $10 billion into OpenAI to have a 49% stake in the company. But OpenAI is still a private company, so you can't just go out and buy their shares on the stock market. That's where Disraptor comes in. Disraptor is a private equity investing app that makes investing in pre-IPO companies easy and affordable. The analysts at Disraptor handpick only the best companies and show you what that company does, its market opportunities, and of course, it helps you understand the risks. For example, People who invested in Palantir back when it was private saw a 133% net profit from that deal. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Disraptor focuses on technologies that have already become market leaders, which means you can get a piece of the most exciting private companies in the world, like Discord, SpaceX, and of course, OpenAI. Right now, you can use the Disraptor app to invest in OpenAI for as little as $1,000. OpenAI is currently valued at $32 billion, which is only about 10% higher than when Microsoft invested their billions. Fair warning, this investing round closes on February 7th, so use my link in the description below today. All right. In the beginning of this episode, I said that being able to tell the difference between disruptors and the companies being disrupted can give you a big advantage as an investor. ChatGPT's productive answers versus Google's search results is just one example. But wait, Google has virtually unlimited resources and they index the entire internet all the time. So can't they just come out with their own version of ChatGPT? Well, here's the thing. AI software and hardware costs are declining at a whopping 70% per year, which means that money won't always be a major bottleneck for building these kinds of tools in the future. Even small businesses will be able to afford the software and the hardware needed to build these kinds of tools by the end of this decade. In fact, according to ARK Invest's estimates, by 2030, it could cost as little as 30 bucks to train GPT-3, which is the model behind ChatGPT. That means that even individuals would be able to build these kinds of tools, not just small businesses. Businesses. That means the winning AI companies of the future won't necessarily be the ones with the best infrastructure or the most money. They'll be the ones with unique data that lets them train these AI models in ways that their competitors can't. What OpenAI is doing by releasing their tools to the public is building up their data advantage. People are using ChatGPT, Dolly, and Codex in completely different ways than how they use Google services, and OpenAI is capturing that proprietary data. That data lets them build and train better interfaces, queries, and AI models than their competitors, which should give their products and services an edge in the market, which in turn would give them more customers. Then those customers would generate more data, which the company would then use to build and train better AI models, and so the cycle continues. That's why most markets with AI-based services end up being winner-take-most. And according to Allied Research, the global artificial intelligence market is projected to reach almost $1.6 trillion by the end of 2030. That's trillion with a T. And that's a market worth identifying winners in. But OpenAI isn't the only winner co-founded by Elon Musk. Another AI company with tons of data that no one else has is Tesla. That's one of the main reasons it's ARK Invest's biggest holding today. Tesla has around 4 million cars on the road equipped with the cameras and sensors required for full self-driving. That's billions of miles driven, tens of millions of which are driven on autopilot or 
on full self-driving beta. All that data, the frames and the labels from every camera, the readings from all the in-car sensors, every human input and disengagement, they all go back to Tesla to help train their self-driving AI. That means that every time a Tesla owner goes for a drive, they're increasing Tesla's data advantage. And because they have so many cars already collecting data, Tesla can quickly find the footage where something very specific is going on. See all the ways that the driver ended up intervening and then use that data to retrain their self-driving AI to handle each specific case better and better. That's not something any of Tesla's competitors can really do right now. And Tesla has a lot of potential ways to leverage all that unique data beyond self-driving itself. Tesla's Dojo program could offer AI training as a cloud service to other automakers, or they could use that data to customize insurance prices for every Tesla owner based on how safe they drive and what the cameras are seeing or they can use that data to improve their photorealistic simulator by including more realistic pedestrian movements and traffic patterns in different weather and lighting conditions. So Tesla is a perfect example of the power and optionality that comes with having data that nobody else does. Another perfect example of this is Amazon because all of the data they collect is unique to their ecosystem. Amazon.com provides them with unique shopping and behavior data, including how people compare similar products and which features end up being the most important to making a sale. For example, comment below if you'd buy a product that makes you pay for shipping, or if you're somebody that goes back to find the one that ships for free with Amazon Prime. Or what about Amazon's Alexa devices? People can use Alexa for everything from searching the internet, setting appointments and sending emails, all the way to playing movies, ordering food, and controlling other smart home devices. Think about all of the unique data that this gives Amazon. For example, if you always order from the same few restaurants when you queue up a movie, Alexa is in a unique position to recommend your favorite orders to you. Or Amazon could do the reverse, where it groups users together by their lifestyle and purchase habits, and then it makes recommendations for products and media based on what other very similar people to you enjoy. Recommending things based on what similar people enjoy is called collaborative filtering, which is one way that companies like Netflix and Spotify already recommend content today. But thanks to Alexa, Amazon could use completely different data to make more personal recommendations and start owning more of every market that they can do this in. If they rolled something like that out under Amazon Prime, it would really blow every other subscription service out of the water. All right. Hopefully this episode helped you understand how artificial intelligence will impact virtually every product and service that we use, just like smartphones did and the internet did before that. And now you know that the market winners won't necessarily be the biggest companies or the richest. They'll be the ones with unique data that results in specialized AI models that you can't find anywhere else. For Amazon, that could mean using all the data that it has about you to make better recommendations based on your current purchase intent. For Tesla, it could mean cheaper and safer self-driving cars than any other automaker can produce. And for OpenAI, it could mean saving people the most time and the most money by generating the answer instead of searching for it. And speaking of time and money, don't forget that you can invest in OpenAI right now for as little as $1,000 thanks to Disraptor. But that investment window closes on February 7th, so make sure to use my link in the description below before then. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.